Friends, we got to talk about primes. What does it mean for a number to be prime? And by number, I mean an integer. So I want to start with a definition, one of many things you could take to be the definition. And then I want to list a bunch of equivalent things, those other things that you could be to take the definition, and at least talk a tiny bit about how do we get from one to the other. So here goes. I'm using the book, uh, Robert Redfield's Abstract Algebra, A Concrete Introduction in the class on modern algebra that I'm teaching, which is a delightful though out of print book that covers the first semester of modern algebra, groups, rings, fields, primes, divisibility, blah, 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 using Galois theory as a framework. Um, so in case you're curious, I'll put some details about that in the um, description field for the video. Okay, anyway, chances are, if you're watching this, you're one of my students that was like, what is prime? And Professor Gibbons told me I had to watch this video. So let's write down a definition. Um, let's say that P in Z, so a number, an integer P in Z is prime provided it has exactly two positive divisors. Let's think a little bit about some of the consequences of this definition before we write down some other things. So let me, uh, let me write down some numbers here. So I've got some numbers here and I wanna test them using my definition of prime. So first of all, you'll notice that I've only written down integers. I was thinking of writing down something sneaky like pi and then be like, pi is not an integer, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, and so when I say exactly two positive divisors, I mean integer divisors here. Um, so let's take a look. So three, what are the positive divisors of three? I'll turn this into a table. I didn't, I, I don't know, I like tables. All right, so positive divisors. Positive divisors, meaning if we do the division algorithm, we're gonna get a remainder of zero when we do this. So we get one and three. Um, larger numbers than three will not divide it. We would get a remainder of, for instance, three when we, when we do the division algorithm and two doesn't divide three. So three is prime. What about four? The positive divisors of four are one and four, but also we can sneak in two between there. So we get two. And is that exactly two positive divisors? Nope. So four is not prime. We'll have another name for four in a moment. Uh, what about zero? What are the positive divisors of zero? Well, one divides zero. Zero is zero times one with a remainder of zero. What about two? Yep, three, yep, four, yep. Okay, so zero is not prime. Zero has way more than two positive divisors. How about one? Positive divisors of one. There is only one. Is one exactly two? It is not. So one is not prime, zero is not prime. Six, uh, sorry, negative six. What are the positive divisors of negative six? Well, two and three three and one and six. I don't know why I started with two and three. One, two, three, and six. There, that is a list of four things. Four is not two in the integers, so not prime. And how about negative five? Negative five factors as uh, one times negative five or negative one times five, which gives me exactly two positive divisors. So negative five, just like five, is gonna be a prime. So quick note that if n is an integer, uh, n is not positive or negative one or zero, and n is not prime, we say n is composite.
which means it's composed of factors other than, you know, absolute value of n and one. So we've got primes and composites, and then we have like zero and plus or minus one, which are special things in the integers. And we're going to dig into that specialness later in the course. But so we've got primes, we've got composites, and then we've got, you know, zero plus or minus one. So that's what we're going to take to be our definition of prime. But as you know, definitions are sometimes good for proving things, but not always good for doing computations or like figuring out, is it actually prime? So here are some other things that we could use to characterize what it means to be prime. When I say characterize, I mean, these are going to be if and only if propositions. You're prime if and only if this other thing happens. So one of the things that we have is that um, P is prime if and only if for every non-zero integer, non-zero n in Z, the GCD of P and N is one or the GCD of P and N is P. So, what that says is that either p divides n, right? Because p being a, a factor, a, the greatest common divisor of p and n means p divides n, or p doesn't divide n, and uh, they share no common factors. The GCD is one, so that actually p and n are either relatively prime or p is a divisor of n. And the way that we would prove this from the definition is we would say, all right, well, the only divisors that p has are one or p. Um, and let's just say, for this case, that we're working with a positive P. So the greatest common divisors of P and anything are either going to be 1 or P. QE done, right? That's it. And if the greatest common divisors of P and anything are just 1 and P, that means that the only possible divisors P can have are going to be 1 and P. QE done the other way. So that's one proposition. Another proposition, and I will admit this is the definition that I learned in my algebra class for P being prime, so I'm partial to this one, is that um, P is Z is prime. I should have indicated above that P is an integer, but I think you're probably on my wavelength here. P in the integers is prime if and only if whenever P divides the product MN, M and N are integers, um, then P divides M or P divides N. This one's kind of weird. Um, this is so, you know, if you've heard me talk about algebra before, you know that I say that algebraists really care about operations and we love things like divisibility. We love to define things in terms of divisibility as opposed to, say, factor trees or inequalities, which somehow don't quite feel like algebra because they don't really, as closely involve the operations and algebra is about operations and relationships. So we've got P divides M or P divides M. Let's actually take a look at what this means. Um, I need to think of a number that's divisible by this other number I'm thinking of and in some maybe interesting ways. Okay, I think, I think sorry, sorry, I should have planned this a little better. All right, so example. Let's say that I take the number, um, I just thought of it, 30. And I want to think about the number 5. So 30 is divisible by 5. And I know from some work we did up above, well, I know negative 5 is prime. That's, we're also going to accept that 5 is prime. So I know 5 is prime. So I want to think about what this proposition tells me should happen. So that means that, for instance, 5 divides um, 3 times 10. And this proposition says 5 has to divide one of those factors. So 5 divides 10. Cool. We're fine with that. This notation that I'm using is the way to write a sentence that says this thing divides that thing. Um, but 
any way that I factor this, it should work. So I should also be able to write, um, how else can you write 30? I can write it as uh, six times five and five divides five. So I found a factor that's gonna work here. And I think those are pretty much the only interesting ways to factor 30. Well, I guess there's one more way to factor 30 into at least positive numbers. I can write it as one times 30 and well, five divides 30 by what we know. So, uh, sorry, that's an and. So this is saying that when, whenever I have this number P dividing uh, my large number that I've written as a product of two smaller ones, if I can guarantee that P, what, however I factor this thing, P is gonna divide one of the factors or possibly both, then P is a prime number. Um, and we'll see a way in which this characterization of prime generalizes really nicely to another way of thinking about prime-like stuff in a different setting. Um, and then there's one, uh, there's one other way of saying this, which is just a souped up version of this one. So an integer P is prime, if and only if whenever P divides a bunch of, a, a product of a bunch of things, it's gonna divide one of the factors. Then P divides MJ for some J. So this is like saying, all right, we can do it for two, where we might as well do a proof by induction to show that we can do it for any number, any finite number of factors. So this is really the same kind of thing going on. And that's like, if I took 30 and I wrote it as, um, two times three times five, I should see that five divides at least one of those factors. And it does, it divides five trivially. So that is what it means to be prime. And that's how we're gonna think about um, actually all of these various ways of, pro of defining and characterizing prime are going to be useful to us in some of the stuff that we're going to do in modern algebra. Now I need to stop recording. All right.